Yo, what's up? This is the ultimate enlisted tanking guide. No matter what your skill or experience level is, I guarantee you're gonna see something new and spicy that you can use in your next games. And the first part, I'm gonna talk about general enlisted strategy for tanking, starting from basics, going to very advanced. The background is purely for fun, you don't really need to watch it, so you can just listen to the video in the background. And the second episode is gonna contain some deep dives into specific game situations and also some really nice tricks that you can use. There I strongly recommend watching the background because I'm gonna talk about what's happening in the background, what you see. Alright, let's start. The first step to becoming a great tank commander is knowing your own tank. This is something many people already neglect because they use the tank they have at hand currently the same way they would use any other tank. This is the first big mistake because you can separate tanks into three classes. First of all, weak tanks, then mid-level tanks and then high-level tanks. Now, weak tanks are classified by having weak armor in general and by having limited firepower. Most beginner tanks are weak tanks. There are some exceptions though. For example, if you get yourself gold order tanks that can save you sometimes 10 to 20 levels of grinding or if you start as the Soviets in Moscow with one of the strongest tanks in the game as a beginner tank or if you start with a Puma in Normandy where you have a tank that's very fast and has ridiculously good armor and a good cannon too. So usually the beginner tanks are weak ones but there are also some exceptions. Now what do you want to do with weak tanks? First of all, most of the time you want to grind experience because gri getting kills with your tank crew gives every tanker assists. So this way you get quite a lot of additional experience. Also sitting there in your tank using your machine gun on far distances, mowing down enemies or even blowing up enemy tanks and other things and blowing up groups of enemies as we're gonna see later in the video is the easiest and fastest way to grind. Also, sometimes if you can't win a game, just sitting in your tank, grinding experience is the only reasonable thing you can actually do. So yeah, this is what weak tanks are for. Though, you want to make sure you don't get blown up. Meaning, weak tanks are usually not good to get close to the enemies. And they're also not good to engage enemy tanks unless they're also weak tanks or unless you outplay them by flanking. So make sure that if you have a weak tank, Use it either in lost games to grind, uh, to grind easy, easy experience or if you really want to win games and become really good. If necessary, don't use it if your teammates can have stronger tanks and also don't use it when you're about to lose, especially as attackers, because taking weak tanks and getting blown up by every little dust uh, corn or every little wind that blows at your direction, well, this is the easiest way to run out of tickets, so make sure you know your limitations with weak tanks and don't spam them if your current game situation can't afford it. Next we have the mid-tier tanks. Now these tanks either bring a strong cannon with a weak defense or have a strong defense in terms of good armor but a weak cannon. Depending on what you have you want to use either one of the following strategies. A strong cannon with weak armor means you absolutely want to stay safe and not being seen by ed uh, any enemies. This is especially good if you're either very mobile, so you can outdrive, outrun any threats and reposition yourself constantly, preferably after every shot. This is a really good tactic, also lots of fun to play. Or you hide somewhere, sometimes even preferably behind bushes or in the forest. And you can, e you can even hide behind complete parts of a forest where you don't see anything at all. But if you have good team play, especially if you're playing together with, a, with other players in Discord and you have voicemail and you have a, a voice channel where you can communicate you can just complete constantly get marks from your teammates or they tell you which direction to shoot or you can even just memorize let's say there's a building there are the windows there's the door and you drive behind a bush so you don't see anything but you still know where the all of these things are and then you can start shelling and this is also how it was done in real life very often tanks didn't see what they were shooting at they just they got information over the radio and then they calculated where to shoot in which direction and then they were shooting and no one saw where the enemy tank is shooting from. So this is as real life as it gets, also requires some skill. It's not some boring gray zone noobing, it's actually skillful and also feels really really cool. The other strategy is if you can actually absorb lots of damage, 
but not dish out too much damage. In this case, you want to do the opposite thing. You want to engage the enemies and distract them in order to pull aggro and make sure that as many enemies as possible pay attention to you. Because if they do that, they, won't, they can't pay attention to the other players in your team. Meaning your other players are gonna have a nice <laughs> superior position. Because if you, let's say, distract three enemy teams, uh, three enemy players, your team loses one player, it's you, or you're occupied, and the enemies lose three players who are occupied with you. So it's in the end it's nine versus seven. And guess which team is gonna win? So even if you don't have a too strong, too strong tank, applying this strategy can be extremely impactful on your win rate. And also create some really nice team play. And now we come to the high power tanks. These tanks are defined by strong cannons and strong armor. Now, here's an important thing. Unlike the previous weak and mid tanks, these tanks most of the time can ignore most or almost everything that happens on the battlefield. Many of them can, can absorb anti-tank rifles or even anti-tank guns. They can absorb stuff like Panzerfaust, depending on where, where they're getting shot at. They can absorb TNT packs, they can absorb TNT charges, and they can even absorb most enemy tank fire. And even some bombs and rockets from planes. So the first advantage that you have here is, you enjoy the privilege of not having to hide and to react to everything that your enemies are doing. You can actually be proactive, so you don't have to be scared. You can just do whatever you want. And this means usually you just drive around and blow up everything that moves, including enemy tanks. Because unlike the previous tanks where you always had to had to analyze what is the relative power. Because these three tiers are not absolute, they are relative. It depends always on the tanks your enemies are bringing. For example, low tier Soviet tanks are similar to low tier German tanks. But... Mid-tier Soviet tanks are usually much superior to German mid-tier tanks. So if you're on the same grind level as your enemy, as a German you usually are gonna have a bad time playing against Soviets. So, so I would never play mid-tier tanks versus as a German player versus mid-tier Soviets. But for high-tier tanks I would play both and for low-tier tanks I would also play both. So here's the important relativity that you have to take account, take into account. One of the biggest advantages of strong tanks, of high level tanks, is that they can actually blow up all or almost all enemy tanks. Because for weak and mid tier tanks, you always have to take into account the relativity between how is your cannon, how is their armor and so on. How mobile are you, can you outflank him to shoot into the weak sides. With strong tanks this usually isn't important, because strong tanks most of the time can one shot all the other tanks. This is, by the way, mutual, because enemy strong tanks can also one-shot you. This is, for those who think this is strange, well, here's the thing. If you look at boxing, low weight classes usually can take lots of punches, oftentimes straight to the head, without falling down, because low weight so, uh, fighters don't, well, don't create too much power when they punch. So the fights are more strategic in terms of, well, <laughs> How, how, how many risks can you take, how often can you attack, and so on. High heavyweight fights, though, can't do that. They have to be very, very careful, because if they land a strong hit on you, you are gonna drop down and the fight is over. Same thing goes for your enemy. If, you, if, if he hits you once really well, you, the fight is over. Same thing goes for the tanks. It's helpful to have very strong armor, but... Powerful cannons are always made in a way, at least in World War II, that you, can, that you can destroy every enemy tank. So the strong armor helps you more against weaker tanks and it helps you against stuff like bombings and auto cannons from planes and anti-tank guns, but it doesn't help you against the strongest enemy tanks. So the, the high level tanks are in a class of their own, meaning they are immune against mostly everything else, but they each other still one-shot themselves. There are some very interesting special cases, for example the Jumbo from the Americans. This tank isn't high level regarding his cannon and regarding his unlocking he's also not that high level, he's quite mid. But his absolutely absurdly strong defense means that he's almost indestructible. Unless, even, 
even the strongest German tanks need to hit its weak spot, which is the machine gun port. If they don't do that, they can't destroy the jumbo. <laughs> and the jumbo will always stay alive. But the jumbo can still deal with the much, much more superior German tanks by blowing up their cannons and then switching instantly to high explosives because the German crew is going to leave the tank trying to repair it and then you high explosive into them and it's basically over. So with some, with some knowledge about your tank strength and your weaknesses and the enemy's strength and weaknesses and resulting strategies, you can outplay tanks even between the different tiers. So knowing your tanks, knowing your enemy tanks is extremely important. Now let's dive into some deeper strategies. The next big question after knowing your tanks and the enemy tanks is when to actually take a tank. Now here's the thing. If a game goes well and you're winning, it doesn't matter what you do. But if you're losing or the enemy is putting you under some extreme pressure and giving you some really hard challenges, there are situations when you absolutely depend on some good tanking because as in real life, there are problems that only a tank can solve. Now here are the situations. The first and most often coming situation is you want to capture an objective and it's full of enemies. Now weak players are going to assume, oh I can just spam grenades, I can just spam whatever and I'm going to clear out the house. Well this works against weak enemies but not against smart enemies. <laughs> because smart enemies are going to do the same against you. They're going to they're gonna molotov the outside area, they're going to throw grenades too, especially well timed ones and then it doesn't work. So you never, if you want to play really well, want to send infantry against infantry because this is literally a grind fest and as an attacker you can't afford grinding because you're limited on your lives. What you want to do is you want some power multiplication to, make, to break the symmetry, to make it asymmetrical towards your interests. And this is where the tanks come in because using high explosives absolutely perfect for blowing up infantry groups in objectives, especially if they are big chunks, and very especially, if the, if the new objective just came up and you're the first person to engage with the new objective, usually they're gonna be around 10, 20, sometimes even 30 defenders that got automatically spawned by the game into this objective. And even one good high explosive shell sometimes gives you 10 or 20 kills instantly. So this is absolutely amazing, also very fun to notice and witness and experience especially from the tanker's point of view. So yeah, this is the first situation. Then, if enemies are building stuff like HMGs, or anti-tank guns, or even normal machine guns, or anti-air guns, they are usually very hard to deal with for infantry and planes, but if you, or, or planes usually are not even worth it to take out for them, because if an, if an enemy built an HMG and your team takes a plane, to just to deal with it, it's, it's a bad trade of resources. But a tank, perfect, because especially if your tank can survive the HMG fire, which many weak tanks usually can't, if you can survive it, just take a tank and high explosive shell straight into the HMG or into the soldier using it and everything around it is going to be dead. And then you can also keep on st staying on your rampage and blow everything else up too. So tanks are perfect for that once again. If you in general see clusters of enemies running around, or if you see the, if you see everyone's favorite strategy, some snipers in the gray zone, usually they're all clustered next to each other. Just always high explosive them. Very, very good. Very hard to deal with snipers, especially good snipers from far away for infantry, but you as a tank once again don't have any problem with it. Then there's the classical case of trenches. Trenches can be also a grind fest that you don't want to engage with but blowing some nice high explosives into a trench solves this issue. Enemies who are really smart usually build sandbag lines. That can be very dangerous because you never know what's behind there. You don't want to jump over sandbags because then there might be a barbed wire behind. You, there might also be mines behind. <laughs> there might also be some... Even if there's nothing behind, if you have to jump over an obstacle, you're gonna slow, get slowed down immensely and you can't shoot for a couple of seconds because your soldier pulls away his weapon. And this slowing down usually means you can get easily shot. And blowing up sandbags and other things with your tank, very very helpful too. Now bunkers are the one of the biggest and best invitations for your tanks because well bunkers are they're, they're, they're defenses but also coffins at the same time because 
people in bunkers usually want to stay in the bunker, they don't want to run away, so shooting high explosives into it, very nice. And bunkers, especially on D-Day maps, they have machine guns and people want to use these machine guns and they mount these machine guns to, sh to shoot on your teammates. But, well, this means you can always perfectly find some nice targets to shoot into. And especially on D-Day, maps like D-Day can be impossible to win for attackers as long as the, mount the, the bunkers are active. So the D-Day map is one of the few maps where I instantly start with a tank instead of infantry. Because blowing up these bunkers, destroying all of the machine guns is absolutely necessary to win. Another thing you can do is, since your tank gives you some really nice mobility and being very fast, especially on maps that allow good tank movement, you can drive around and scout the map. You can easily flank, because if you try to flank this infantry very often, you're so exposed, you're going to get shot instantly from all directions. But if you're in a tank, you can just drive around, meaning you can gather really good information, you can flank enemies, you can, you can find groups of enemies that are hiding behind obstacles and blow them all up. You can even find your enemies' rally points indirectly, because if you see a group of enemies every 5 to 10 seconds spawning behind the same tree, <laughs> yeah, you know there's a rally point there. And obviously very, very welcome to blow it up. Or even if the enemies are spawning in their grey zone, in their natural spawn area, it means they spawn with a shield. So once you shoot at these enemies and you see they don't take damage because they have a shield on, you know, all oh, right, this is the normal spawn area. This also gives you the information that, oh, wait, if, there, if I constantly see enemies spawning and I don't see any other enemies spawning anywhere, this means they don't have any active rally points. And you know, all oh, right, we're in a really good position and you can give your team the information that, all right, they are spawning very slowly. So as long as we just kill a bunch of soldiers who are in the objective now, we just need one or two rally points and then we can bum rush the objective and we're going to take it because we, if we only have to run 50 meters, will inevitably overwhelm the enemy forces if they have to run 150 meters from the natural spawn area. So gathering information even without killing anyone is already really good. And also, most of the time, enemy anti-air guns are built deep into the grey zone. And the only way for them to, to be blown up is by a tank. Because infantry won't be able to even see it. Planes, well, if they see it, usually get scared and killed in the next second. So yeah, <laughs> tanks are perfect for that. And all since all tanks also spawn in the, net, in the grey zone, being able to flank your enemy and take a deep look into the enemy area of control usually gives you a good starting position for tank duels because you will see him first. And most enemies don't expect enemy tanks looking at them one second after they spawn the tank. So yeah, that's also amazing. And be putting yourself into a nice flanking position, maneuvering yourself around, can also give you a nice shooting line. Meaning you can just shoot into one line and this line, like a blade, cuts off all infantrists coming towards an area, meaning they can't jump over the line. Whenever they reach your shooting line, they will all die. So this way you can very reliably make sure an objective stays completely clean of enemies. The absolute rarest and highest skill regarding tanks is to actually be able to precisely identify whether taking a tank in the current situation is optimal or not. For those who just want to have fun, this is not that important, but for those who want to become extremely good, this is the most crucial skill. Because taking a tank in the wrong moment can make you lose the game or can put your team at a strong disadvantage. And if you're already up against very good enemy teams or your team is already very weak, you literally can't afford a mistake like that. So here's how you identify when taking a tank is actually really good or not. If you just started your grind, you will have access only to low-level tanks and low-level planes. Now here's the thing. If you have a low-level plane, it will be most of the time better than a low-level tank. Because low-level tanks can't kill enemy tanks and they are very easily killed themselves. Low-level planes, though, are much harder to kill and they can actually kill basically every tank your enemy is going to use because even a beginner plane, as long as it has a 100 kg bomb, can easily drop it on top of a Tiger II or a Jumbo or an Ice II and the tank's going to be dead. So with low level, with low power level of vehicles, planes are definitely better. But if you have a high power level, 
in terms of your vehicles available. Then the strong tanks are much better than the planes because now the tanks don't have the disadvantages anymore and instead they only have advantages over the planes because planes are much slower, their performance, their kill amount per minute is much slower than for tanks in most situations because planes have to fly between the objective and the resupply point constantly and if you can't shoot down a couple of planes in between if your enemies don't even give you some nice target practice then your performance per minute literally drops completely tanks don't have the problem with tanks you can literally sit there in an area for 10 to 15 minutes and not run out of ammunition and bring the pain to your enemies so strong tanks much better than strong planes of course everything has exceptions obviously i don't need to tell this because this is self-evident now what about the tanks and planes interactions in between well it literally depends on every situation so these are the general guidelines they're going to help you a lot now you know how to choose between tanks and planes but the most important thing here is whether you choose between vehicles or infantry now here's the thing if you think you're gonna profit immensely from taking a tank then take a tank but if you think that taking an infantry will be as good as taking a tank or even better always take infantry because infantry has significant advantages we already found out it can capture points it can build rallies it can do lots of things that tanks can't do and infantry is much more flexible much more also if a tank gets blown up usually the whole squad is dead infantry though you can spread out you can let your soldier stay in a barn hiding can always take one soldier attack with this one soldier deal damage then he gets killed you take your next soldier and you repeat this until you are used up your seven soldiers but you killed 25 enemies a tank usually can't do that so and especially if there's a strong enemy tank around that could shoot your tank or if there's a strong plane in the air that can easily deal with your tank vehicles aren't really a good idea but infantry is a much better idea so the general rule is as usual enlisted if you can solve a problem by building a better ready point do it sounds very simple but this is literally something 99.99 percent of all players don't think about and even if they claim they know this they still in a real game against good enemies will fail at doing so successfully so keep this in mind Almost every problem can be solved by building a rally point in a new position that's either completely different, meaning flanking, or that's just a little bit closer to the objective, or that's just a little bit more to the left or more to the right. Sounds very simple, but this is literally very important to know for being a good tanker, because if you take a tank and you get constantly destroyed, it's literally the definition of not being good at play playing tanks. Very often you also can't do anything about it, because the circumstances just don't allow you to succeed with your tank. So it's very important to know when to take a tank and when to not take a tank. Here's a very helpful tip, especially for beginners. Don't use your tanks only as tanks, you can also use them as mobile assault squads. Basically as mechanized infantry. Because you can give your tankers SMGs. This means if you have a tank get as many tankers tank crews unlock them as quickly as possible many beginner tanks can can carry five soldiers and give them really good weapons give them smgs one smg or even two or give them one smg and uh, and an ammo pouch give them grenades very important and then you have all you need to have in order to kick some ass because what you can do is the following you can very often if you have a weak tank, if it's fast enough, or if it has a weak cannon but good armor, you can do the following. You can just drive towards the objective as an attacker and just leave the tank and start capping. And this is extremely helpful because, well, even like a full powered assaulter squad has seven soldiers of which five of which only four are soldiers. Of which only four are assaulters. You are five men your five man more mobile assault squad that you just built yourself isn't that far behind a perfect assault squad anyway yeah and it has the advantage of not being able to get shot by normal weapons on its way to the objective so this is already really good and you can while you're driving towards the objective can just shell the objective already with fire weakening it up 
making sure they are much le they are less defenders. Also, possibly making sure that the enemies try to spread around or run away or hide or do some strange things that they would never do against an assault squad that's running towards the objective. So this is a really, really helpful strategy and it helped me always when I started a campaign or started a nation grinding it up. Using the strategy is going to help you a lot.